This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. Look, I always look for the best guests to bring on to the show. And anytime I get a chance to bring this guest on, I jump at the opportunity. Tyvis Powell on the show. You know, you're one of the favorites of the people who watch this channel. Every time you come on, like, man, I love it when Tyvis comes on. It almost makes me feel unappreciated. But, you know, I get over it. <laughs> First of all, you the main attraction. You know, like, they, they, they're they not coming for me. They're coming for you. I mean, they're going to come back for you. I'm just glad that I can be a helping hand and I'm glad that people, you know, respect my opinion and like the things that I say. You know, I try to I try to educate people and, you know, give people the inside look of the locker room of in of the players and stuff like that. So, that's my that's my mission. Now, speaking of that inside look, I got to ask you this question. Uh we saw Greg Newsom get beat uh, on a deep route and immediately try to take the head off of Brian Thomas Jr., to which <laughs> I thought to myself immediately Oh, that's how you can tell he got cooked and he knows it because he immediately. <laughs> no, that's not what. Back. That's, not that's not why. What? He, that's not what it was. <laughs> what it was is on that on that particular route, right before the ball is about to drop. Brian Thomas push off, pushed him mm. off, like mushed him, like Ugh, yeah. And he, it, and he was upset at the yeah, fact that he called. Did, yeah, that's what it is. Like anytime you get a push off like that and it's blatant and like they don't call it, like you are you upset about the you upset at the referee, but. Obviously, you try to take his head off because, like, why? Who you think you is trying to pull it off? So that's why he did what he did. But I ain't mad at it because I would have did the same thing, <laughs> especially a rookie doing that to you. Now, I gotta ask but you, Brian Tom, Brian Thomas is he's a he's a trash talker like that. Yeah. That dude be talking cash money to these to these corners. So it it, probably, it was a lot of chirping going on from the get go. So that's oh, that yeah. already was on the floor. You got the whole Big Ten thing, North versus South, Midwest <laughs> versus South. You know, I bet it was a lot of trash talking, but we do got to go through it because we were talking about this on one of my shows earlier. And it's like your favorite DB not accountability moments where like a DB just decides that ain't my fault. Yeah. It looks like it might be their fault, <laughs> but it might be. They, yeah, they, they, gonna, they go point and go look at somebody else. Like, no, it's you. You. Know? <laughs> what was your favorite go to when you were playing? When you when you saw somebody mess up, and you like, oh, he gonna go do the point. That, that, <laughs> right? The point. That, this is what it is. This is this is the funniest thing. The palms and going to run at somebody with the palms open. That's the one that makes me laugh every time. You know who did that? Uh when it was the coverage bus in the first game against Brandon Cooks. If you go back and watch it, as soon as Brandon Cooks scores, uh, Thornhill turns around and looks and like, what's going on? That yeah. makes me laugh every time. Like, like y'all funny. Y'all funny with this. <laughs> Why Thornhill showed up to that play like a security guard with a flashlight? Like, <laughs> they, they swear up and down it was a coverage bus on that. I guess – I guess Martin Emerson was supposed to fall off of his man. I went back and I looked at the play because it looks like zero all the way. But I guess maybe they was because Dale Pitt's man was blocking. He was hovering. So the first in route, because they ran the they ran the, the big seven concept is what we call it. That's when one and two do, do five yards ends and number three does the big seven cut. And post corner for people that don't know what a seven cut is. Um if you go back and watch that play, Dale Pitt actually hovers so far over that the first end should have been him. New G New should have got the second one, and I guess they wanted Martin to bracket number three and be the outside piece. Because when I looked at Thornhill, I was looking like the way he played it. I'm like, dude, you first of all, you should have known that this was coming. Like that, first of all. But he does play it like he is, is expecting help on the outside. So mm -hmm. And then they talked about it after the game and said it was a coverage bust. So I'm guessing Martin Emerson messed up on that play, but it 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 just looks bad. <laughs> Have you ever been a victim or a user of, <laughs> uh, of the man? What y'all do? Listen, and you know it could have been you. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I, it, it's happened to me a couple of times. 
where it's my fault. Like I, I can think of a college situation, the national championship. I gave it was a post route. We was in cover three, and I jumped this over route and left my boy Duran to dry on this post, and I think they end up scoring. That was on me. I couldn't even say nothing. Like, it, that's me. Then when we was in the NFL, so this is the funny one. We was in the NFL, right? I'm playing for the 49ers, and I had a Willie Beeman moment. It was, you know, a Willie Beeman moment is when you sitting on the bench chilling, and the coach is looking for you like you in the game, and it's like, whoa, 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 I'm the third string. What am I doing? So... Our 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 star safety, uh, Jaquaski Tart, he went down with a stinger. Our backup was Antoine Exum. He went out. I think he had a concussion. <laughs> so I'm on the bench chilling. We we just did we just did special teams. I'm on the bench chilling, and, and they like Tyvis, you in? Where you at? And I'm on the bench cracking jokes. <laughs> <laughs> We win it. We win it by like a touchdown. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm chilling. Yeah. And they're like, you win, you win. So I'm like, I'm oblivious. I just grab my helmet. I'm running the game. I know nothing about what's going on. <laughs> and this is why you gotta pay attention. This is when I realized it's important to pay attention to in-game adjustments because yeah. We ran this. We ran this concept where it was a. Uh, we called it Reno, where it was only you only triggered it. I'm sorry that I'm. I'm trying. I'm gonna paint this picture for the listeners as best as I can. So we call Reno. Reno was when it's a slot set. So meaning it's just whiff to one side. So you got a receipt to one wide receiver to the left, one in the slot, and then on the back side of that is a nub tight end. So we take our coverage and we shift it all the way to the wide receivers. So earlier in the game, we were supposed to be being the, the the safety on the to the wide receiver. You had all outward breaking routes. OK, and if that guy runs an over route towards the nub side, you supposed to drop it. OK, and the adjustment was run underneath number one. Mm. OK, so that was the that's what it was. OK, <laughs> so I come in the game on this. Being cold, not paying attention to nothing. They run this set. And my boy Sherm, they ran a they ran a post to, I think it was Fitzgerald. They ran a post to Fitzgerald, and I was supposed to be underneath it. I can't remember if they completed it or not, but I was supposed to be there to pick the ball off. And they went, <laughs> I went back to the sideline, and they was like, you know you messed that up, right? You know you're supposed to be there. And I'm like, that's not how we ever – we never talked about that. And they was like, we literally went over in the first half. And I was like, mm. yeah, I missed that. <laughs> so I had – those are my two my bad moments. That's on me. <laughs> they, they didn't brief you or nothing before. No, man. hey, they, they, you know, you, they like, you should have been paying attention. I'm like, you man, I was kicking it. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I was kicking it. I was thinking, you know, hey, look, I just got these returns. This dude in front of me. Yeah. Like, I said, well, first of all, Q, what, and it's what like the Jaquaski Tart was like a legit like starter starter at the time. So I'm like, you're not about to take him off the field. Yeah. Like, then they told me, they actually told me that week that I was supposed to just worry about corner stuff. They're like, don't even worry about safety stuff. We want you to be a backup corner for this game. So mm -hmm. the safety stuff, I completely forgot about it anyways because I was thinking just corner stuff. And, yeah, yeah, I got thrown in the fire in that one. Gave up a game when it touched down to Christian Kirk. It was bad. Oh, it, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. That was that was a bad game for me, boy. I was you can't no bad game at quarter or at safety, too, because nah. you know everybody blamed the safety regardless. Oh, yeah, it's all And then it's actually it. your fault? It's like, the, ooh. The funny <laughs> thing is, I don't run away from it. I was like, yeah, it's on me. It's on me. I messed that up. Mm -hmm. So you never ever did the point to another. We now go look at Tyvis Powell mm -hmm. tape and mm -hmm. see you point at Von Bell and uh, be like, "Where was you at?" It's me. <laughs> I point. I, I pick. I point right at me. That's on me. That's on. I'm me. gonna ask everybody who went to Bedford at the same time. Go ahead. You, like one thing. One thing about me, I take accountability. I even take the blame for somebody that don't want to take the blame. I'm like, you know what? It's on me. I should have been better. It's just me. Let's just nip Maybe. it in the bud. Ladies and gentlemen, stand-up guy, Tyvis Powell here. <laughs> Look, one of the few quarters who's actually pointed at the – I've never seen a quarter 
point at themselves. Like, you know, maybe, maybe that was the problem, Tyvis, in that game. You should have pointed at other people because when I see the best quarters out there, they're always like, hey, it's pass interference. Well, <laughs> like, no, no, that, no, I did that before. I, I done yelled at a referee before for not calling something. I did do when, that. <laughs> when you saw Jamar Chase not let it go, Oh my your god. Your quarter break. What 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 happened in your mind when you saw that? You're like, dog, what makes somebody that mad? Yeah, <laughs> like, like he got the beefing with Joe Burrow. I'm like, this your boy. Like he it, it. got mad at everybody. I ain't seen somebody that mad since Miles Garrett. Like <laughs> that man trying to win, he's trying to get some money. That's you know what I'm saying? So everything matters to him. And so that's a man who's stressed. He wanted promotion. <laughs> He want a promotion. And look, I know people like, it wasn't about money. He got hip dropped or something Listen, like that. I'm Y'all like, you. see, if he was paid, he'd be able to just take that and be like, you Listen, know what, that's the game. I went, I went straight, I went straight boondocks. Well, I wonder what made him that upset. <laughs> that wasn't no regular man. That wasn't no he held me bad. He got mad at the refs and like obscenely mad at the refs to start. Yeah. He start. He pointed. He did the finger. You don't ever point like that when yeah. you just regular I mean, man. They had no choice but to flag the man. Like, yeah. like, like what would you? You took it too far. He came back. He came back. He, <laughs> and then Joe Burrow let me down. Because I thought he knew better than this. You can't do the whole be back when he that bad. <laughs> you just gonna make him matter. Because <laughs> now he know there's a barrier between his insanity I'm, and I'm, the referee. So he cranked that up to a 12. I'm just shocked that they off to the start that they off to. like, And, and they played a good game, but like. I don't know. They they need to figure something out because they could get in the AFC. It could get late early. Like you lose too many. Like it's over with. What do you do when your homeboys that bad on the football field? Like, hey, listen, it's hard. It depends on who it is. Listen, I I remember when I was in Seattle. Right, you could look this up. <laughs> so I'm a rookie in Seattle. Right, we playing the Falcons and Sherm. Cam, Cam had got hurt. Cam was out. So when we played the Falcons, we came up with this game plan that usually we run cover three, we run seam alert to the tight end side. So the seam alert for people that don't know that that box safety, that strong safety carries that tight end. If they run four verticals, he matches, mm-hmm. takes them. So what was happening was on the back side, they was calling stretch concepts. So when I call seam alert, that means you got the guy up, vertical and out but when they stretch when they call stretch that means we gonna man it we are us two is just the corner and that safety gonna man it. it's okay so they went out there and the first time they got this formation they called stretch and they ran it and it was perfect so sherm was like all right cool i'm glad you did that that's how we plan it for the rest of the game <laughs> they came out there that formation again that man didn't call stretch. He played it like normal cover three. Julio was wide open for a touchdown. It looked like it was on Sherm. Sherm went off. I'm talking about ballistic. I was looking at him like it ain't that serious, but it was that serious to him. So it took the entire sideline to stop us from, from Sherm killing my boy uh, McCray, Kelsey McCray. He was about to kill this man on the sideline, and we all had to, like, everybody, the whole defense had mm. to grab Sherman and stop him from doing it. So I was like, I ain't, I ain't seen nobody. It was like, uh, you remember Isaiah Stewart for Detroit when he went after LeBron? <laughs> when he went after LeBron, that's what Sherman oh. was. Yeah. Oh. That's what it was like. It was oh, just it like was that. a multiple. Like, yeah. he was trying to evade the pushback. Y- y- yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, so when I seen Jamar, I was like, oh, it ain't up to that magnitude. It ain't that bad. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just seen some stuff now. Look, uh, now, <laughs> one thing for watching live sports, I know this immediately. If you ever back up an athlete to tell them to calm down and they put their hands up immediately, <laughs> he's <laughs> running play action. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> they go over for you. Yeah, this is he, this is about to run through that gap the second he gets a chance. You got listen, I'm good. The, the second <laughs> you do this, it. right? You got your hand on his chest and you look around and see what the situation is. He gone. He I'm gone. He, Every he, time he surrendered too quickly. <laughs> Every uh-uh. time. Yeah. Every now, time. When he fight through, he just <laughs> trying to get it out. Right? Unless <laughs> unless he really ain't about that life. If he ain't about mm-hmm. that life, you can put one finger on his chest and he'll act like it's like he really being held back. Mm-hmm. I forget what's it was it Legarrette Blunt that that happened with where he was like no nah, Legarrette like, Blunt knocked somebody he didn't he beat he up from Boise or something like that he beat multiple people up throughout <laughs> his NFL career <laughs> he knocked out a dude from Boise there are yeah, probably did. stories about him doing stuff at practice I think he knocked somebody out while he was in Detroit like yeah, yeah. world heavyweight champion of the world during his NFL career it's, it's, it's certain people you find out it's certain people that you can't really you know what I'm saying don't even mess with them let them have it. don't let even go man, yeah. Yeah. And, the, and the coaches and ownership they know it like don't even go don't even talk to him because he crazy <laughs> It's all. Wait, is it a vet that'll tell you? No, no not him. No. Not that one. Not that one. <laughs> mm. Not that one. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't. Is that what you think? <laughs> I'm telling you, you don't really want to do that. I'm telling you, you don't want to do that. <laughs> I wonder who's like that on the Browns, because you have to imagine that there is a great somebody that crazy. Is. Yeah, that somebody is crazy that you would not assume is crazy. <laughs> like I, we kind of get, the, we kind of know that Miles can get to that point, but it takes a lot. It's if Miles gets to that point, yeah. there ain't no stopping him. He going, he he going, he going. If he really want that smoke, like that whole team can't hold <laughs> Miles back. Yeah, you're not. You so you, don't even go back. there. He not. He want, <laughs> don't even go there with him. Don't even try because <laughs> we can't save you. Once it happens, it's over with. We can't save you. <laughs> I remember his first year. The Browns had hard knocks and. There was like a clip of him going up against Greg Robinson, and Greg did not like how hard that Miles Garrett was going at him. And Miles Garrett was like, "I'm the pass rusher. You you supposed to stop me? <laughs> like, what's I the mean, problem? He, he ain't wrong. <laughs> he's not wrong. And they had just the falls. It was like he was like reading Maya Angelou in the clip before and talking oh, about yeah, dinosaurs. Cause he like he and the dinosaurs and all that. Yeah. I, it was like, but Miles Garrett <laughs> likes art." But he will give you them hands. <laughs> Listen, when I first, because I was I was with the Browns in 2017 when they drafted him. I was there for OTAs, and ironically, he sat next to me in team meetings. And he was just a, he was a funny dude, man. Like Miles is hilarious. I mm-hmm. I like I, some of the he wild the wild dude. Like <laughs> he was a wild dude. Some of the stuff he was saying and doing, I like, bro. I don't think you could do that. But he, yeah, Miles was hilarious, man. He and if he after you, it's over with. You could just you might as well. I don't know, concede defeat. Don't even go there. See, look, Miles has always been the biggest dude in his friend group. I agree. And, yeah. and you know what the dynamic is with the biggest dude in the friend group. Don't know any boundaries. Never know what the boundaries are. Like we, You I say something friend. wrong, I'm telling you, it's over with. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> One of my homeboys, he played defensive end on the football team. He was the biggest guy in the friend group. <laughs> Used to just come into one of my friend's rooms all the time in the dorms. Eat that man Reese cups. I'm like, why are you doing this to him? Yeah. Like, see now, he, now he bullying. Now he bullying. I'm like, why are you eat his Reese cups? Now, see, see, now, and, now I gotta, I gotta say something to you now. See, like, now I gotta get an argument with you about these Reese cups because you know he's not gonna say nothing. He's afraid of you. Like, I got to say you something. You go out with yeah. us and you need my twenty dollars to get the check in to get to the club. So I can say something about it, but bro, <laughs> come on, you can't take that man. And he's just eating it while watching his TV. That's nuts. Boy, That's pulled nuts. a straight boy, straight Debo with the man. The big big fellas is crazy out there, especially the ones that play football. Uh, not to put a negative stereotype out there. I mean, you, know. you might want to you don't mess with them. Like they nah. they ain't got they got some loose screws for sure. Mm-hmm. Like J O K, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't mess with him. See, I think he. I, I you know I what? He's peaceful. You know what? Right. I, it, he them be the ones. <laughs> them, them be the ones. The yeah. ones that seem like nah. He he seem cool, laid back. Them be the ones that'll go insane on you. <laughs> My man put that guardian cap on and said, "Oh yeah, I can uh, do this." <laughs> see, I can't. I, I can't. I can't rock with it, man. I, I, I'm just. 
if I was what, playing, I'm not wearing that. It's, I don't that, care. That don't is care. the last person you want beef with. The man who's like, no, nah, this guardian cap enables more physical violence. I don't care it, how it, it looks. <laughs> between, between, if you want to know who you shouldn't mess with on a football team, listen up, ladies. This is serious. This is classified information. If you go to a football game, right? And they out there, and they ain't got no wristbands. They ain't got no tape. They ain't got no sleeve, nothing. They just just put the pads on, and they just out there. That man's dangerous. I'm just telling you right now. That man, no tape or nothing on your hands or arms, he's dangerous. Stay away from him. Nick Chubb, <laughs> stay away from it. <laughs> stay away from him. Stay hey, away. You know who else ain't wearing wear nothing? Stay away from them, man. You know who else ain't wearing nothing? A noted all star in that area, <laughs> Leonard Fournette. Right? He only had the little elbow things. Right? Leonard Fournette. They ain't got no nothing. Don't mess with them. I'm telling you, they are crazy. This is how you knew you should have messed with Leonard Fournette. He came into college bald, like. <laughs> Yeah. He was 18, yeah. bald with a, a beard. That's a <laughs> that's a that dude was a Mack truck man at LSU. I mean, <laughs> I know people was making business decisions when he came around the corner. Like, yeah, I'm Ty, cool. You look younger than Leonard Fournette did his freshman year of college. Like, full beard though, boy, look like Rick Ross. <laughs> know, like he came that. in there, looked like he had a 20 year <laughs> career in the Marine Corps. Like freshman year of college, I'm like, where you been? <laughs> now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, that man definitely was bald head with a full beard, in and not just like, oh, I shave, <laughs> I'm bald. No, like oh, yeah. had the developed chrome. You know what yeah. I mean? We like yeah. somebody got that bald chrome. Yeah. Eric Fair follicles ain't touched that head in like four years. <laughs> and he got a polish going. My man had the polish. We don't got one picture of Leonard Ford that hairline back here. That's crazy to me. Like, not one. <laughs> I truly nah. forgot about that. Like, yeah, he did look like that in, in college, didn't he? Yeah, like, who's that? Is that? Like, <laughs> Dad, that's somebody uncle. That's crazy. Somebody uncle. You wouldn't have thought nothing if you saw an 18-year-old letter for that man in the grill at a barbecue. You'd be like, all right, Pops. I like, know, like, you, <laughs> one of them, you one of them dudes that hurricane, you lost your uh, pass, your uh, birth certificate, so you saying you 18. Hey, you really like this some Bishop Sycamore stuff right here. We gonna see Leonard Fournette at fifty. He ain't gonna look any different, any different than what he did. Yeah, that's true. That's probably but true. Let's try to focus on the Browns. I know we got a bit all over the place here. <laughs> uh, week one, pretty pretty awful performance there from the offense. Yeah. Week two, it looked like an NFL offense. Now, how do you gauge the Browns' improvement on one? Just what they put out there week one. And two, keeping in mind what your expectations were for this unit yeah. coming into the season. Because I find that a very difficult thing to balance. Because on one hand, you're like, hey, week two is an improvement. But if we're looking at what the bigger expectations for this team was, week one doesn't happen. We're still like, hey, what's going on with the offense in week two? I it's agree. only the juxtaposition of week one that makes us feel that way. Yeah, so it, you obviously expectations after week one, everybody's expectations for week two went back significantly. Like it was like, dude, we just need you to complete some passes because it, it looked bad in week one. It looked like <laughs> it looked like an offense that hadn't played together. That's literally what it looked like. It looked like you went out there and got a bunch of pieces, put them together. Your offensive line wasn't 100 percent, but you put them together and it showed. And it looked like a quarterback that hadn't been playing football. I mean, his timing was off. He didn't have no chemistry with any of the receivers. His offensive line wasn't used to him. He was holding the ball, trying to make sure he can try to get it to somebody and make a big play happen. And he kept getting hit because of that. And I think because we saw that performance, week two, nobody knew what to expect. <laughs> Everybody, mm -hmm. Especially when, you know, Deshaun comes out and says, you know, we're still trying to find our identity. It's going to take some time for us to figure out what we want to be and all that. So everybody was just like, oh, man, it's, it's over with. It's done. Like, it's done. And week two comes around, and it, it looks a lot better from the standpoint of he had chemistry with his receivers. He was able to hit his receivers in stride, and they made some plays. 
His offensive line, yes, they still had a ton of holding penalties, but Deshaun didn't get sacked as many. I think he got sacked, what, twice maybe or something like that? So Deshaun was getting the ball out of his hands more efficiently. And it just – and when you've seen that opening drive, which, you know, Kevin Stefanski is the great greatest at that first 15, he takes it down in 16 plays and he scores, and he does so many different things. You know, Deontay Foreman comes in and they're running the ball – it's not like the greatest thing, but it was effective. Um, Deshaun hitting the receivers, uh, Jordan Aikens making some plays. Like it was, it was a team collective win, and I just think they need to build off of that. Obviously, the biggest part of it is that they were successful without their number one receiver and Amari Cooper even doing too much. You know, and that's the that's like the missing piece to me is that mm-hmm. Coop got to get going again. But at some point, my biggest fear is. It's hard for people to make a ton of plays when everybody's flat footing everything. You know, we're not we're not pushing the ball down the field. We're not doing ma- none of the deeper development routes. And maybe that comes this week. You know, maybe maybe the Giants give you that opportunity to push the ball down the field. But if I'm playing DB against the Browns right now, I'm sitting at seven and I'm not moving. Like I'm I'm gonna sit right there, and I know you're gonna run something short because that's what y'all been running for the past two games. So. I'm going to challenge it and, and see if Deshaun arm is good. I want to see him. If he beat me throwing a deep ball, all right, then he's he right. But I'm willing to give up at least one time. And I think that's the challenge that we're going to see, you know, moving forward. Until Deshaun open that arm up and actually complete something 30, 40 yard, 40, 30 or 40 yards down the field, DBs is going to be aggressive. Now, I saw something where the Jacksonville Jaguars – they have been throughout the first two weeks in cover one and mm-hmm. cover two, like I think 75% of the time. And mm-hmm. then you look at like the defense that he played against uh, week one where Dallas, they give him more cover three, cover four, yeah. or cover six looks. This week he's going against the Giants where they give mm-hmm. you more three and four high looks. Do you think Watson's success this week like has more to do with – the fact that he saw looks that he might be more familiar with out of Jacksonville. And like, do you think that, you know, how teams play with all these safeties back now, um, you know, the, the three high to four high stuff. Yeah. Is that an issue for Deshaun Watson? Like, is it like, are we going to look back at this and go, Oh, he can't, he can't push the ball against, <laughs> against these coverages. Well, anymore. I mean, like, is it, it's, is it's not it just him. It's not just him. Yeah. Nobody. It's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, no quarterback is really having success with it, and that's become the new NFL, you know, making their, all these quarterback dink and dunk down their way down the field. Now, that's when the guys like Elijah Moore and Jerry Judy and, you know, those guys come into handy because you can get the ball in their hands. They can make people miss and get yards that way, which is an effective way to do it as well. You can't get greedy, and that's the thing. They're trying to bait quarterbacks into throwing the deep ball. Like, it gets boring after a while. I'm going to keep checking it down and keep throwing these. Th- like, I, at some point, I want to throw a post route. I want to throw a fade route. Like, I want to do those things. And if it's covered three, you can take those chances. You can take it because that's one-on-one on the outside. So anytime, if, if it's three or one high, you know, some of those times you're taught to throw the ball on the outside because it's a one-on-one 50-50 ball. So you might get more of that, but if any time it's too high or if any time it's too high or quarters, you got to work the middle. You got to work the middle because it's hard to complete something down deep down the field when you got oh, safeties over the top. So he just got to stay patient. And right now, mm-hmm. the way they did it in the offseason with him throwing a lot of quick game, getting the ball out of his hands, RPOs, you know, that's going to be the game right now. And the only way that RPO is going to be effective is if they run the ball effectively. And I think that played a little bit of part of why they had some success against Jacksonville because they had to respect the run in some point because the Browns were showing that they would run the ball. So I think going up against the Giants, it's got to be the same thing. You got to get that run game established, make these linebackers respect it, and now it opens up you know, play action and RPOs and things like that. What do you think is going on with Amari Cooper? Right now, like do you Listen, just I'm, think- I'm not hearing. I know everybody's like, "Oh, he's upset because yeah. he was getting you." They wanted to trade him, and he wanted to. Ca- I'm not hearing that. I'm not yeah. I, because the thing is, unless Amari Cooper wants to retire after this season, he has no point. But he has no choice but to play hard because he's still playing for another contract somewhere else. So yeah. I'm not. 
I ain't really hearing that he ain't he ain't interested in all of those things. He has no choice but to be if he wants to continue to play this game. I just think it's just been some bad luck. I think his concentration had been there. You know, he maybe he was disgruntled and maybe he wasn't locked in. I mean, he missed all of well, he missed OTAs and training. I think he missed like yeah. two weeks. He missed he got back to training camp. Or maybe he missed like one. two days or something. And then he I think he missed after Greenbrier pretty much until the end of the training camp. Like I think he only played that first week in Greenbrier. See, that's what I'm saying. So this is a guy who's I think he's just getting his rhythm back. And like I say, it's hard right now because it's not like Amari Cooper's a burner. It's not like I if I look against Amari Cooper, I'm worried about him beating me on no fade route. That's not not saying that he can't, but I'm not worried about that right now. And with the like I said, with the quarterback situation, like everybody's flat footing. Like when they play Dallas, <laughs> that that rookie, Carlston, whatever his name was. That man flat-footed Omari and almost picked a slant like two times because he knew that the ball wasn't really going to get pushed down the field. And Omari's not in his best route last year was that bang eight. And they mm -hmm. have not called that one time for him. And the reason I liked him running that bang eight, bang eight is a, like a skinny post for people that don't know. You run it, I think it's on like your fifth or seventh step. You just boom, slant right across the face, and they throw you the ball like it's real quick. But the reason I like that route concept is because on that reduced split, it's a two-way go. You know, he can run that spray out or he can run that bang eight. So it, it gives a lot of corners a, a lot of trouble. But he was really good at that. And they got to put him back in those situations that he thrived in. Um, and that's that's the only thing I see, they see with him. I think it's going to come. I, I don't think it's something that's going to linger. I think if not, I think it comes this week, actually. I think he has a big game this week. You know what it reminds me of now that you mention it? When DTR was out there, Amari had a couple games like this. And it might just be this is what it looks like sometimes when they don't when corners are, you know, flat footed out there, they kind of don't trust that you're gonna go deep on them. Yeah. Um, that they can sit on things and that they can kind of sit on a lot of what Amari Cooper does. I mean, he does have those two drops. It was unfortunate. Um, especially that second one, right, where he was yeah. right underneath it. Yeah. And then, like, I don't know why he jumped at it. Like, it was... <laughs> it missed time, missed time. It missed time. I don't know. Like I said, it's, may, I don't know. If these guys, maybe they didn't get a ton of work together. I have no idea. Maybe the ball looked like it's going to sail a little bit. I don't mm -hmm. know. But it's – he dropped – what? I think he dropped the touchdown in Dallas, and yeah. he dropped those two in this game, and they were both critical. So he should know – like, even though they paid Judy and all of this stuff, I know people like, oh, he's upset that Judy got paid and blah, blah, blah. He's still the guy. Like, he's still – they're still looking for Coop. I mean, I think he had, what, eight targets in this past game or something like that. So he's still mm -hmm. the guy that they're looking for. He got to embrace it. Like, I I just think he's just off to a slow start. Yeah. Also, I don't think he mad that Jerry Judy got because he nah, just, that's, paid that's, that's when Jerry bro. Judy got paid. Like, that's true yeah, he's he not mad at somebody get 18 million. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that, Actually, they, like got, they got him for the cheap. <laughs> he like, who you should have signed that. <laughs> yeah, you should have you you played the season first. They got you for the cheap. They playing 30 mil out here for wide receivers now. Oh, like, you know, so but I, Judy wasn't going to get that, though. Yeah, He just but, went ballistic this year. It, but Amari Cooper, I think if, if anybody who has paid any attention to how Amari Cooper operates, the man want to get paid. He not about yeah. to play bad football on purpose. Yeah, nobody <laughs> is. You can't nobody you can't is. afford to put bad tape out there because you still yeah. try to get paid by somebody. Mm -hmm. But it, it is interesting when it come back. I think he he'll be back playing well. Yeah. Sooner than later here. Um. How much longer you think the Browns can survive out there with with uh, their current tackle situation? <laughs> I because mean, sometimes it ain't the worst. No, nah, it's but, not. It's but, not. I, the problem with it is, I think the though. I think the problem with it the most is that I think it's affecting our guards. Like I think the mm -hmm. I think our our guards are trying to overcompensate for the tackles that now they're looking bad. Like they're mm -hmm. not doing their job, and I think that's the problem with yes. it. All the all, like, for example, when Dewine first started last year, Wyatt Teller's production went down. <laughs> like it went down because he was literally telling Dewine what he had to do every play, and mm -hmm. I can't focus on what I'm doing because I'm trying to make sure you're right. 
And yeah. I feel like that's the same thing that's going on right now, especially with Batonio, because Batonio has been so good. And all of a sudden, he's getting blown up. He's getting holding calls. Like, it, it just don't look right. So I think for the sake of our guards, we need the tackles back ASAP, which I think Jack Conklin is supposed to play this week. I remember Nathan saying that we should expect to see him this week when I talked to him on the pregame last week. So I expect to see them. But they said it might be one of those things where James is in, then Jack's in for a series, then James is in. Like, it's, it might look like that. So They do that with DeWan a couple times, too. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I'm not a fan of it. I've never really seen it like this. But, hey, if it's going to help them get through the game and win the game, by all means. But I'm not a fan of it. Because what the Ravens were doing that last year with Falele and uh, Ronnie Stanley, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I ain't, that's not, I wouldn't do it, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. If it's working, go ahead. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, I, I've been noticing that too, where it's like, it feels like a lot of pressure is being put on this interior of the offensive line. And like, that's where we're starting to see it kind of show itself. Cause you mm -hmm. would imagine if Wyatt and Joel are on some level babysitting, right? Like, mm -hmm try to make sure that other things are taken care of before they get to themselves, then that has a trickle down effect on the center and, and so on and so forth. And I think that's been part of the reason why we haven't been blown away since all these injuries have happened with the interior line play, because it's not just you're kind of sacrificing what they can do to make other things stay upright. So, yeah, I think just getting back one of those starters would just take so much stress off of yeah but i still think it's it's still gonna be there especially with Vittonio, because jack hasn't played left tackle since college so yeah it's still going to be there but you think that all right he's at least maybe he's better off like i won't have to help as much because this is a really good tackle even though he's mm -hmm. flipping sides he's still a good tackle so maybe that helps Batonio ease his mind a little bit but it's still gonna be some tension there because until Jack gets comfortable or until Jed gets back in there, it's going to be so. Even when Jed gets back there, he hasn't taken a step in a whole year. So it's going to be some growing pains for the next couple of weeks. How do you get in shape to play on O line, though? Like, that that's my playing O line. That's, that's the, the only, only way. way, right? Because you can't only get way. on the treadmill, work out. The, it, it, it's it is a, such a difficult way. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a dog fight. Every play, you got holding going on. You're trying to stop these dudes. You don't know if they're going to speed rush you, bully you. It, the only way you're going to do it is you got to get out there and take those reps. You can sit there and you can run gassers and all that. You're still going to be gassed when you go out there because it's just different. It's a different mentality. You got to go 110% every play. Like it's, it's just different. So until they get out there, I give them like a week and a half, maybe two weeks from when they start that they will be in shape. One thing that does help, they don't pull those tackles as much as they used to. No, nah, right. they put uh they put Nick Harris or somebody in yeah. and, and have him motion and do it like that. Yeah, so at least you ain't got to do that. <laughs> Just like, I don't know how they was playing. Like all when they play like five hundred snaps a day, I'm like, oh god, that's that's they exhausting. Was, they was out there five six linemen or uh, six linemen uh last week. Dude, what did you see from the run game? That did the run game look like it was improved from what we saw last year? Because I liked how. I mean, it just seemed like it was so much easier for them to get just something simple like three, four yards on yeah. first down. Like, that was such a battle all last season. Well, to, I mean, it to, just, to me, it it, it 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 depend on who the running back was. You know, Foreman's going in there, and he's just putting his head down, and he's going to try to pick it up that way. Jerome is more of a, I'm trying to find an open gap and trying to get through it, and – Sometimes it just don't work out. Like it, it, his his vision gets cloudy and no gap is there to where the, the foreman is like, even if the gap ain't there, I can at least get two or three yards if I just put my head down and keep running to where Jerome Ford is like, I'm trying to pick it. I'm trying to find an open gap and get through it and try to pick up a big game like that. So I just think that the running style is different. I think they did a good job of utilizing both of them because it was like, you know, for Jerome's big play, obviously it was the fourth down play. He was wide open. He used your speed to get to the outside. 
to where a foreman is like, use your, your physicality to pick up three or four yards. We're not asking you to break the thing. We just want you – we just want to call this second and six instead of second and eight or second and nine or something like that. We want second and six, second and five maybe. It's an easier call, and I think that that's what they were doing a good job of doing. What about Jerry Judy in this one? Um, you know, pretty good stat line from him with five or six, 70 yards. No touchdown, but I think he had a touchdown last week. Yeah. Do, what, what are you liking that you're seeing from Jerry Judy? I, you know what? My biggest issue with Jerry Judy before he came here is that I thought he spent a, I spent I thought he spent a little bit too much time at the top of his route shaking. You know, he mm. wanted to really put that extra move in it to break somebody off. And that's time, you know, in the NFL, it's all about time. Like I got, I mean, you got to have that route open in two or three seconds so I can get the ball out of my hand because these DNs is good. And I think with the Cleveland Browns, I think he's gotten rid of that. I think he's figured out, all right, I can win this route quicker by just boom, boom, and getting to where I'm supposed to get. And Deshaun's doing a good job of finding him. So I thought that was what it was good. And for some odd reason, when, when Deshaun breaks the pocket, he knows what Deshaun is looking for. Deshaun found him, I think, twice on broken down plays, which has been something that Deshaun's been looking for since he's been here. A guy that I can go to that understands, hey, if I'm deep, come short, or if I'm short, go deep, and I'll find you. And I think they're developing that chemistry, and that's a big part of Deshaun's game. So I love the fact that he's become the guy that Deshaun will look for on broken plays. Judy was there with Bryce Young, right? Or was it Tua he was there with? Ah, uh, he was Tua. Was Tua, Tua. Jalen, Jalen Hurts and Tua, I think was his two. Dang, I'm, I know those. Because Bryce, yeah, there. Bryce wasn't. I don't think Bryce was there. Because Judy came in the league and what? That was 19, 20, 20. Was it twenty? I think it was the yeah, twenty. It was twenty. It was twenty. It's same year, CD Lamb. So and Bryce came in through. Maybe Bryce was a freshman. Maybe might have had a year with Bryce, but I know yeah. those wide receivers who played with Bryce, they better be good. They they gonna be good at scramble drill. <laughs> like, that's that's that what he did. That's what he did. And, and also, what there hasn't been a quarter like there, there's. It's been a long time since there's been a quarterback that you kind of love to hate. I guess it's a better word out there to describe what I'm saying. But it's, it's like, like <laughs> it's like a shot Freud. <laughs> I want him to get him, get him. It's, not, it's <laughs> not like you get excited. It's just like, yeah. It's like That's Josh it. Allen. I think it's the closest thing like that when you see Josh Allen oh, take yeah. a sack and he's like, yeah, well, okay, Josh. <laughs> 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 I don't feel that way when Lamar get hit. <laughs> like, nah, I'll be like, ooh. <laughs> I'll be like, that. You need to slide to protect yourself. Yeah. I don't ever. <laughs> I don't ever find myself talking about and, how Josh you know Allen what? Is it, de <laughs> it depends <laughs> on who the court. If it's one of them quarterbacks that's big and be trying to put their shoulder down, yeah, like yeah, Josh, do it. Anthony yeah. Richardson, like yeah, y'all deserve. It. That's what you get. See, that, who's the biggest player you've ever tackled? The biggest player I've ever or the tackled. toughest player you've ever had to tackle. Ooh. What you went up against Derrick Henry in college. Oh, that's it right there. That's it. They say no more. That's it. That's the number <laughs> one answer. That man. <laughs> when they took him out in that Sugar Bowl, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life. Because that dude, it took the whole team to try to get this dude down. I don't know why Lane Kiffin took that man out, but it was they literally handed us the game when they did that. Derrick Henry. Okay, who had less fun? You try to tackle Derrick Henry or Landon Collins try to tackle Cardell Jones? Mm, Cardell definitely ran him over. Ooh, That's a, Cardell a big dude, too. Like He like a Josh Allen type size. Ah. See, Car and Cardell has some speed behind him, too. <laughs> and my dad always points this out with Cardell because he's like, Cardell is from Glenville. And he yeah. spent like a year at Ohio State prep to stay at Ohio State. He was at Ohio he State for what, He went to Fort Union, yeah. Yeah, for like six years. And he was like, see, that is a man, a, a big-ass man, running with the pride of his state, okay? <laughs> Ain't nothing you going to do about that, dog. Yeah, Cardell. <laughs> like, it's, it was so much more. I actually... That. I actually think the Cardell versus Landon Collins is harder than me versus Derrick Henry. I ain't gonna lie, Cardell. I remember he ran straight into Landon Collins. <laughs> like, 
He didn't even try to avoid him. He just went, and I, my back went, ah, watching it. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, Cardell was on some trash. He was on trash back then. He's, and I would I would like to say he calmed down, but I think he's worse today. I think he's much worse today. And when that was his second start? Yeah, it was. Yes. Second start, he been there six years. Dog, he crashing out every play. And, <laughs> and if he play on? He probably ain't wear no. He probably ain't had nothing on his arms either. He probably Ooh. just went out there, no tape, no nothing. So you knew he was on track. No fancy face mask. <laughs> he was on track. <laughs> like, I had to go back and look. He was, I, don't think, I really don't think he wore things. anything on. Uh, just a big dude. Yeah, <laughs> man. yeah man. The people don't understand how how physical this game really is, man. And it's like. I don't know how familiar because, like, I think Cardell went to high school at the same time I was in. Well, we I think we the same age. He graduated. Cardell was left. not. Cardell was so skinny in high school. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah he was. He was. He came to Ohio State. He was. He was two fifteen. He came in at two fifteen. That man was two ninety nine. <laughs> that man was like, nah. He was like two seventy. I think he, Cardell got up to like the two seventy or something like that. I don't so, know. They always had him listed at like 240. I'm like, hey, Drew. He, he ain't 240. I'm going to tell you that now. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, that's a lie. He was moving. For two, yeah. and I was like, ooh, that's a whole lot of bad. That man was like 265, 270 easily. Mm -hmm. And then when Zeke was on that team too? Yeah. That man ran it with a purpose. Yeah. I don't know if Alabama came in. I don't think Alabama will ever come in and underestimate an Ohio State team. No. But, <laughs> There's a level of preparation. This is not going to prepare you for like that coming at you. Like, nah, because that it was like Zeke lives the Marshawn Lynch thing, where you try to you keep running through somebody over and over and over and over and over. Eventually, they're gonna move out the way because he's sick of mm -hmm. it. Like that's Zeke. Like he's gonna continue to do it over and over and over and over and over until you say like I'm cool. And <laughs> yeah, the second you hesitate a little bit, he had that acceleration back in the day. Yeah, yeah, he ain't got that gear no more, but God, that man was good. And I think what it was like, what? Who are the wide receivers on the team? Devin Smith, uh, Mike Thomas, Evan Spencer. Mike Thomas was on that team? When we won it in champion when we won the championship, yeah. Huh. It was the two starters was was uh Mike and Devin. That's crazy. Mike Thomas used to take some hits too in college. Mike, man, boy, Mike used to talk some That's trash, boy. Dang, I'm mad he couldn't stay healthy. Man, he was so good too early in his career. I know, man. man. That body take a beating, man. Yeah, that was a. It's always an interesting game to look back on because, like, I didn't think Ohio State would have what was going to win that game. And my dad, big that's messed Ohio up. <laughs> y'all, everybody that say that is messed nah. up. Y'all, that's messed up that y'all ain't believing us, man. <laughs> hey, bro, that was back when they had what was his name? Was it uh, he was the a linebacker, he played special teams in like Reuben Foster. Reuben Foster, yeah, and, like a, that yeah. year, I played with Big Rube yeah. with his San Fran <laughs> that year on special teams. That man was a terrorist, yeah, like he look. would just. And people on special, and that's all you saw when you saw Listen, Alabama man. play. When we that. played, when we played them in that Sugar Bowl, he hit Curtis Samuel so hard on kickoff. If Curtis would have fumbled, I would have said I understood, bro. It was the, it, it was that loud. It was like, oh. it was like you hear that crack. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it. I was like, oh, these boys hit down here today. <laughs> yeah, I remember crazy. that. It was like Derrick Henry just running over people. I think Blake Sills was the quarterback, and they had a Mari yep. Cooper on that team, too. Yes, they I did. was like, Ooh, that was an Alabama team. There. I found out like you you're not gonna stop Amari. You could try to slow him down, but you he gonna get his. Like yeah. The separation that he created. That's why I tell everybody, if if you young and you go up against Coop, like maybe not now, maybe he's toned down a little bit now, but back in his prime, if you ever went up against Coop, he was going to embarrass you because it, it you got to see it first to believe, like, oh, this dude is 
fifty. Like it, the space he created was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I good luck. When he ran four four back then, still yeah, like Coop, Coop was nice. He was one of the. He was probably the best receiver I went against in college. Like I easily, obviously, he was a Heisman finalist. So yeah, easily. And then Joey Porter Jr. found that out the hard way too last year because I think yeah. it was a game where the Tavari was like, "I'm just gonna run this slant." <laughs> like, and, who, who gonna come back? That's why I said I ain't, I ain't counting him out. That man gonna find it, and when he do, it's a wrap. Yeah, I think they're gonna figure it out there. But fun time talking with Tyvis, um, reminiscing. On, on, on certain things and then also just talking about db celebrations if you have the clip of tyvis ducking the blame i need to get it sent to my right. twitter it immediately it don't exist he says it does not exist he has never not taken accountability for a mess up and you know if Maybe. it's true rare breed rare breed. so you was out there with the finger point like you know what man that was me it's on me man don't worry about it it's me it's me See, look Every secondary needs to do like Tyvis audit because that just diffuses a lot of tension, right? It there. do. So it really does. That's, take why, the that's <laughs> why I start doing it right there because I'm like, we not y'all about to see her argue about it. Like it's on me. Don't even worry about it. It's me. Yeah, my bad. And then can't nobody say nothing after that. Nope. <laughs> it is like, all right, guess it's over. And see, that's why Ohio State won the championship that year. So thank you, Tyvis, for no coming problem. on. Appreciate you, man. Anything you need to shout out before we head out there? Man, shout out to the Browns. Shout out to the Bucks. Make sure y'all watch the Big Ten Tailgate Show Saturdays, 10 to 1130. Me and Mike Hall, I'm going to Washington this week, uh, Indiana next week. We we going for the rest of the football season. Make sure y'all tune into the Browns pregame and postgame shows on game days. Um, make sure y'all watching UCSS uh, 11 to 1 on YouTube during the week. I'm on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and yeah, that's it. You know, turn your radio on, you might catch me. Turn the TV on, the radio on, or to get on the internet, you bound to run into me at some point. And I gotta ask you, this the year that Ohio State gets back in the right the way college against Michigan. Yeah, the way the way college football looks right now, I, I don't see them not. I don't see them not like Texas. Them versus Texas would be a really good game. I think they beat Georgia. Mm -hmm. You think Texas beats Georgia? I do. The way they playing right now, I do. I'm just so not used. Well, like I was young in Texas. I might like say it's it, it's been a while. It's, it's been, been like a while since years. we've been having to be serious about the University of Texas. Like it's kind of like every year USC come up in there. You're like, oh man, USC might be good. And then it's like, nah, never mind. Like, USC, Bush might, no USC might be. They might be legit this year. Are they playing defense? Yeah, they are. They play defense. They are. They go. They got to play the Wolverines this Saturday. So, they which they not that good anyway. So, yeah, they playing good. Some good defense. Caleb Williams sitting there furious. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, they, they they finally want to do it now. Huh? Now that I'm going, <laughs> now all of a sudden y'all know how to want to cover. It. We couldn't beat Utah because y'all didn't want to cover. But okay, all right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now y'all want to play defense. That's that we lead the Pac-12. That's what y'all doing to the Pac-12? Yeah. Like, go to the Big Ten. Now you playing defense again, huh? Okay. You got to. <laughs> you got to. <laughs> Lincoln Riley to learn how to play defense. Like, that, that's crazy. You got uh, to. In the Big Ten, you got to play defense. By the way, Lincoln Riley is a Big Ten coach. Never crossed my mind, but that's actually true. He's a Big Ten coach now. I never thought about it until you just said that. Yeah, he is. And I'll be out there, too. I got to go out to USC at some point, too. So I'll be out there. Yeah, it's going to take a while for us to get used to USC, UCLA, and Oregon, and Washington being in the Big Ten. <laughs> like, they might have say, hey, UCLA and UCLA might be the only one that's doing the worst out of all of them. The other three is pretty good. I saw USC versus Michigan. I was like, oh, yeah, it's still out of conference, huh? Like, <laughs> where they playing that well, game at? They still doing they play big, that game in Texas? versus Pac-12. Yeah, like, you know, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, oh, yeah, they still must schedule the big home at home. Like, <laughs> it's going to take a while, but we almost there. We getting there. Appreciate you, man. You all have a great day. Time is have a great day. Everybody else have a better night. Peace.